Hey folks, welcome back to the Off Grid Workshop. We're back in with the Land Cruiser 80 Series. Got Dad here in the workshop as well. And uh, today is a big job. Well, I say a big job. Uh, it's not massive, basically changing the timing belt on the 80 Series. So uh, I can't remember when this timing belt was last changed. We're on 222,000 miles. And I think it was around about 100,000 miles ago, maybe thereabouts. Uh, so it's time for sure probably on borrowed time actually. So we can take you through the full process. Uh, it's not particularly difficult to change the timing belt, uh, but you just have to be careful and make sure that the timing of your engine is correct before you put it all back together and start the thing. So we'll take you through that. Also, just while we have everything off and we are in there, we are doing just general maintenance and replacing parts like new water pump, new thermostat, uh, new alternator and uh, aircon belts and then obviously the new timing belt so yeah let's go all right so the first thing we need to do is drain the coolant so back and down there in that gap right there is the bolt that you open to empty the block of its coolant and then the radiator has a separate plug uh, so we're going to get in there i'll put a little uh screenshot of a diagram in here to show you exactly where that plug is for the engine block. It's basically that bolt right down there. Let's see if you can see it down there. Okay, so we'll get that undone. I think it's a 14 mil um, that you just have to get with socket and extensions, etc. So it's a bit of a pain to get in there. You can see there the coolant emptying out of the side of the block. Um, that's where the plug is for emptying the coolant from the block. It's a bit of a pain to get into there because you're going around all of those pipes, etc. Uh, but yeah. Okay, for the radiator, you can see the little plug over there, just next to those uh, pipes there, the little white one. That's what we're going to open now to drain the radiator of the coolant. Okay, and there we go, the radiator's draining there. Okay, next thing is to take the fan, the viscous fan off here. Um, leave the, your alternator belts, etc connected to do this just so it holds everything in place. <clears throat> just four uh, 12 mil bolts here. Not nice even. Okay, take the fan out and then, because we're not replacing the radiator, we're gonna be pretty careful not to damage the fins on the radiator. Getting this guy out. Okay, we're now going to take the tensioning pulley for 
for this is the aircon belt actually I think. Oh no, this is alternate, is it? No aircon. Okay, so we actually could take this pulley off the water pump to take the alternator belt off without actually adjusting the alternator tensioner. Obviously we'll adjust that when we come to um, put the new belts back on. <coughs> We're going to take the power steering reservoir off and just leave it loose just so it's out of the way. So we can get to the clips for the cover on the timing belt. Take these clips off here. Put the uh, iron belt cover. They ping quite easily, so just be aware of that. Already lost one of mine's missing already. I should actually get a replacement. Two ten more bolts there and. It looks pretty good actually, considering. Um, no, cr no cracks or anything. The slackness is not to worry, anything to worry about because when it runs, it actually tensions where it needs to be tense. Yeah. Okay, so this is the uh, tensioning uh, little block from the alternator. And uh, interestingly enough, this truck was actually missing the main bolt that tensions the alternator. So obviously that had rattled out at some point and fallen out. And uh, because it was just tight and never adjusted, um, it was never noticed. So I have, uh, it's just a, an M8 threaded hole there, that way. And then the actual bolt that was in here uh, was a little bit worn and, and the corners were rounded so I'm going to replace it with this guy here and put that through um, and then put this back together with a new tensioning bolt. So I'm just finger tightening this in here for now just because when it actually comes to um, because I'm going to need to take the the tension off the alternator to remove the brackets so that we can uh, get the water pump off. Okay, so that's fine. I'm gonna crack all of the nuts on the, uh, I'm gonna crack the bolts on the bottom of the alternator and then those two, these two here have to come out to obviously get the, the alternator, uh, the water pump out, sorry. Last one down at the bottom. A little pain to get to. Okay, 
Okay, that should allow the alternator to swing out, I think. Yep, there you go. And then we'll just take the two top bolts off. And probably take that tensioning bracket off as well. Now that I've put the new bolts on there. And then I'm actually going to take this bracket off here, just the new bolt that I've put on there. Just so it's out of the way and get that water pump off. Okay, we're going to turn this engine over until our, uh, this line lines up there so we can just um, check that, basically just get it set so that when we take the bolt off we don't change the timing. Okay, so we've rotated the engine so that the timing mark here lines up. There's no point in us putting a new mark on there. We're just gonna use that same one. To rotate the engine, you um, go on the main crank pulley down there, and it's a 32 mil bolt, and you just need to make sure you turn it clockwise. And then get this back lined up here. So we're gonna take this belt off, and then uh, we can take this housing off here to get to the water pump. Yep. Okay, so we've got the belt off. It's going to take the tensioning pulley off because we're going to be replacing that. So now that we've got the cam bolt off, it's time to take all of these covers off so that we can hold the cam shaft to um, take the pulley off. Okay, so this cover is a bit of a pain to get off just because of the aircon things back there. And rather than taking all of that off, we've been able to just shift the cover over enough to get to holding the camshaft. So you can see here on the camshaft, there's the, this hex section here, which uh, you can then put an adjustable on to hold that, which then enables you to crack this bolt on the main pulley. So we can get that off and uh, then we can get the cover off the front of the engine here so we can change the water pump in this section here. Just taking this off. This might be a little bit stiff here and just need a few cracks with a rubber mallet. Get it off. And it should have, it's got that little thing there, I forget what they call this. Um, it just gets it back onto the right position when you go to put it back together, so don't lose that little bit. Otherwise, you're pretty screwed. But when it goes to actually putting this thing back on, you're gonna be able to get it back to where it was. There's a bit of a groove at the bottom there that you can slide this thing into. Okay, and then we have four 12 more bolts. Let's get this cover off. It's 
So there was one other bolt down here which I had forgotten about. So there's one, two, three, four, five bolts that hold that cover on. And once those are all off, you should be able to do it off fairly easily. It's um, glued on with like a gasket seal. All right, so now time to get the old water pump out. There are, I think, eight bolts dotted around this thing. If you check the new pump, uh, it shows how many they are. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine actually. Nine bolts all together. All right, moment of truth. Time to get this pump off. Water pump in. Okay, so I'm just nipping these all these bolts up. There's seven in total, the two nuts and then the five bolts. These two on the side here hold the tensioner for the alternator. Um, so they go right through the water pump and into the block. Um, I'm just nipping these up, just hand tight, not, not very tight, and then we'll torque them more uh, once we get to that. Torque range for these bolts is 20 newton meters, so that's for the 12 inch heads. Just gonna very carefully scrape the old gasket off here. Then go to put the new one on, you can see that. Don't have this interfering with that. These bolts we are talking to 20 newton meters as well. <coughs> okay, so we've talked all of these down to 20 newton meters. And now we're gonna put this back on. So we've just got this little pin here. Um, the rounded side goes on the inside. You basically have to line that up with the groove. So it can only go one way. Um, bit fiddly to get it in. You have to kind of get the pin the right distance and find the groove. There's the groove. Can only go one way. And that's it there pretty much. Good, still lined up there, so now we can put this bolt back in and hold the camshaft and torque this thing. Okay, so we've got this torqued uh, 98 Newton meters and have the line lined up again, so everything's good. Probably gonna put this cover back on now and close that all up because there's no need for it to be open anymore. Uh, we didn't adjust anything on the injector pump pulley here. And that's still lined up, so that's good. So in theory, timing should be should be sweet. So we're gonna close this cover back up and then uh, we'll crack on with putting all of this back together. Okay, so this we're talking to 26 newton meters. Yeah. 
Okay, the spring uh, ball tree are going to talk up to 26 newton meters as well. This one we already did to 26, and then this one was 98. <clears throat> okay, so the easiest way that I've found to put these on is to put it around the bottom pulley, around the inject pump pulley, and then you pull this top bit so that it's taut. Obviously it's um, jumping teeth on that bottom one just because it's not under tension. But if you get this sort of tight like that, then you have enough slack to just slide that on there and then that should be good. There's a bit of slack on this, so what we'll do is, um, once we've got the tensioning pulley on, it'll obviously tension this correctly, and then we'll know whether we've got the teeth lined up, because we'll turn the engine a couple of times and just make sure that these lines line up so we've got the marks with the timing. Alright, moment of truth. Turning the engine. See if we get back to the same. Okay, we are. Does that look pretty much there? And pretty good on that line over there. You think? Yep. That's good. Okay, just t talking back these uh, covers here to 20 newton meters. Right, so we've turned the engine over a couple of times now, three times or so, and keeps coming back to time, both on the uh, um, crankshaft and the um, injector pump pulley, looking pretty good. So we're going to turn it over, just start it and just check it now, and we started the engine. Obviously we don't have all of the uh, fan bolts and everything in yet, but um, and no coolant in, but it's fine just to start uh, quickly, just to double check. All right, Dad, let's go. Sweet. Okay, and then we can put the cover back on here. Okay, just changing the fan on the viscous coupling or um, viscous clutch, whatever you call it. And uh, it's just very simple, four bolts with a, or four studs with a 10 mil nut. <coughs> um, I'm only changing it because the one fan on the old uh, fan was damaged. One blade. One blade even on the old fan, you can see there. Um, so it probably wouldn't really have affected it much, but while well, we have it out, might as well just change it. So, might as well just tighten this in properly. Yep. So after much fiddling with the uh, fan bolts, with them in, it's now time to try and drop this guy in here. All right, so we had put the tensioner back in for the aircon um, belt, 
but what we found was that it actually makes it then very tricky to get this fan in without really damaging the back of the radiator. So we took the tensioner back out just to finger tighten this fan on so we can tension the belts properly. Okay, so I think these belts are pretty much there. So um, in theory, you should just be able to turn them about 90 degrees, um, but that you don't want to over tighten them because then it puts pressure on your pulleys and bearings and all that sort of stuff. Um, for this tensioner for your aircon belt, uh, once you've got the tensioner back on with these two bolts, uh, this bolt here on the top is what tensions it. So just turn that, and then now I need to tighten this, which is the locking nut. It holds that in place and stops it from being able to move. For the alternator, the tensioning bolt's down here on the side. Um, and then you have the lock nut for the alternator tensioning right in here, which is a bit of a pain to get to. Then in addition to that, for the alternator, there's a bolt right on the bottom of the alternator that you have to tighten, which is basically where it pivots so that it can tension. So three bolts there to tighten up. And then uh, once we've done that, we can tighten the, the nuts on the fan. And then in theory, that's as done. We just have to put coolant in, which should be good. the alternator tensioner locked and then finally if you can get in from the top here dad you can see where my roughly where my socket is um, right down there underneath the fans that's where the uh, locking nut is for the alternator so that's basically the pivot point so you have to undo that uh, for the alternator to move and that's the final one to tighten up Putting in the final plug before we put the coolant into the radiator. Very difficult spot to get in. So you need long skinny arms. Okay, I'm to fill this guy up. So we're using this comma red concentrate coolant. So it's 50-50 water and coolant. So we are going to put three liters of coolant in and then the same in water. And then we'll start her up and let that circulate. All right, what's the date today? Well, we just put um, March 2023. That's uh, three, and I can't see nothing. Two, two, two K miles. Okay. Okay, this here. Check the font, put over your writing, it looks like. Okay, folks, well, that's us done. Uh, changing the timing belt, I've been wanting to do that for probably about a year now. It's been in my mind, and so definitely relieved to have that done. Pretty smooth. Probably the most challenging bit was just getting the tensioning spring on the actual timing belt, uh, just because it was, yeah, doing that with one person would be a bit of a slog if you didn't have the right tools for it. And to be honest, I don't know what the right tool is for that. The best way that we found was actually to use a flathead screwdriver, get it in the actual spring like that, and then lever it over the pin, and then use another screwdriver to shimmy that spring down the, the first screwdriver until it popped off the end onto the actual pin. That was probably the most challenging bit. And then just the usual working in tight spaces and stuff like that. But yeah, pretty relieved. Um, 
found some stuff that we need to do on this over the coming months in the summer. So under the air intake here and this battery, there's a bit of corrosion on the wheel height, so we're going to have to pull all of that out in the summer and tackle that. The shroud around the radiator fan is also damaged, um, so we'll have to replace that at some point. Uh, probably replace the radiator when we get around to doing that, but um, that's not critical for now. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. Uh, this truck's doing pretty well for a 1994, nearly 30 years old. Still going strong, 220,000 miles, and the uh, engine's just getting warmed up. So yeah, mm -hmm. hope you enjoyed that. We've got a bunch of things we're gonna be doing to this over the coming year, new suspension, uh, winch, all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.